The classes that we are going to talk about in this course are not only used in power amplifiers, but also used in audio amplifier circuits. The first class that we are going to examine is class A amplifier. This amplifier circuit must look familiar to you because this configuration is nothing else but a common emitter circuit amplifier. So we already talked about this circuit and we have also seen how to design one. So let's just point out some facts about this configuration. Ok, so class A amplifier is a high gain amplifier with high linearity. In case of class A amplifier the conduction angle is 360 degree. As I explained in the previous course, a 360 degree conduction angle means that the amplifier device remains active for the entire time and use complete input signal. As we can see in this image, there is only one active element which is nothing else but the transistor. So the bias of the transistor remains on all the time, right? Due to this never turn off feature, class A amplifier provides better high frequency and feedback loop stability. Other than these advantages, class A amplifier is easy to construct with a single device component and minimum parts count. Despite the advantages and high linearity, certainly it has some it has many limitations. Due to continuous conduction nature, the class A amplifier introduced high power loss. Also due to high linearity, class A amplifier provides distortion and noises. The power supply and the BIOS construction need careful component selection to avoid unwanted noise and to minimize the distortion. So we mentioned that class A amplifier has high power loss, right? This means that it emits heat and requires heat sink space, which sometimes is not available. The efficiency is very poor in class A amplifiers, theoretically the efficiency varies between 25 to 30 percent if used with the usual configuration. The efficiency can be improved using inductively coupled configuration, but the efficiency in such case is not more than 40 or 50 percent. Thus, it is only suitable for low signal or low power level amplification purposes. Now that we highlighted some important facts about this uh, class, let's move to class B. The class B amplifier is a bit different from the class A as you can see here. It is created using two active devices which conduct half of the actual cycle. In other words, they conduct 180 degree of the cycle. So two devices provide combined current drive for the load. If the circuit is used to provide audio signal amplification, then the load is nothing else but a speaker, right? You might wonder how are these transistors biased? Well, the bias is provided by the input signal, which means that the input signal has to be higher than 0.6 volt, and also the input signal has to go negative in order to bias the PMP transistor. Don't worry if you don't understand how this circuit works, because in the next course we try we will try to simulate some of the classes so that you get a better understanding of how they work. Now let's just concentrate on theory a little bit and don't bother yourself if you don't understand exactly how the circuit works. So this class B amplifier consists of two active devices which get biased one by one during the positive and negative half cycle of the sinusoidal wave and thus the signal gets pushed or pulled to the amplified level from both positive and negative side and by combining the result we get complete cycle across the output. Because these two active devices are turned on one after another and because they conduct only half cycle, the efficiency gets improved. Compared to the efficiency of a class A amplifier which is 25 to 30 percent, the class B amplifier can have an efficiency more than 60 percent. Also, the heat dissipation is minimized in this class, providing a low heat sink space. But this class also have limitations. A very profound limitation of this class is the crossover distortion. As two devices provides each half of the sinusoidal waves, which are combined and joined across the output, there is a mismatch, or in other words, crossover in the region where two halves are combined. This is because when one device completes the half cycle, the other one needs to provide the same power almost at the same time when other one finishes the job. It is difficult to fix this error in a 
class B amplifier, as during the active device the other device remains completely inactive. The error provides a distortion in the output signal, and due to this limitation, it is a major fail for precision audio amplifier applications. An alternate approach to overcome the crossover distortion is to use the AB amplifier. Class AB amplifier uses intermediate conduction angle of both classes A and B, thus we can see the property of both class A and class B amplifier in this AB class of amplifier topology. Same as class B, it has the same configuration with two active devices, which conducts during half of the cycles individually, but each device bias differently, so they do not get completely off during the unusable moment or the crossover moment. Each device does not leave the conduction immediately after completing the half of the sinusoidal waveform, instead they conduct a small amount of input on another half cycle. Using this biasing technique, the crossover mismatch during the dead zone is dramatically reduced. But in this configuration, efficiency is reduced as the linearity of the devices is compromised. The efficiency remains more than the efficiency of typical class A amplifier, but it is less than the class B amplifier system. Also, the diodes need to be carefully chosen with the exact same rating and need to be placed as close as possible to the output device. In some circuit construction, designers tend to add small value resistors to provide stable quiescent current across the device to minimize the distortion across the output. Apart from the class A, B and AB amplifier, there is another amplifier called as class C. It's a traditional amplifier which works differently than the other amplifiers classes. Class C amplifier is tuned amplifier which works in two different operation modes, tuned or untuned. The efficiency of class C amplifier is much more than the A, B and AB, so a maximum 80% efficiency can be achieved in radio frequency related operations. The interesting thing here is that class C amplifier uses less than 180 degree conduction angle, and during the untuned mode, the class C amplifier unfortunately gives huge distortion across the output. But in typical uses, class C amplifier gives 60 to 70 percent efficiency. The output amplitude is a nonlinear function of the input, so class C amplifiers are not used for linear amplification. They are generally used in radio frequency applications, including circuits such as oscillators that have a constant output amplitude and modulators where a high frequency signal is controlled by a low frequency signal. So it works fine with a simple sinusoidal waveform, but may have unacceptable distortion with complex waveform, as the class C amplifier the transistor conducts for less than 180 degree of the input signal. On the other hand, class D amplifiers are way more popular and wider spread as class C amplifiers. It's one of my favorite in terms of functionality, and we will also try to simulate this circuit in our simulator in the next course. While class A, B and AB are classified as analog designs, class D amplifiers are classified as switching designs. As you can see, the circuit is very different from the others. This is just a semi-block diagram of a class D amplifier, but in the next course we will see a full functional circuit. So class D amplifier is a switching amplifier which uses pulse width modulation. If you are wondering what pulse width modulation is, I advise you to look that up on the internet because it's very important technique used in electronics. Basically pulse width modulation or PVM is a technique for getting analog results with digital means. So digital control is used to create a square wave which is a signal switched between on and off, right? As the name implies, the width of the square waves are modified in order to vary the amount of current that flows to a device. Alright, so the conduction angle is not a factor in such case as the direct input signal is changed with a variable pulse width. 
In this class the amplifier system, the linear gain is not accepted as they work just like a typical switch which have only two operations, on or off. Before processing the input signal, the analog signal is converted into a pulse stream by various modulation techniques and then it is applied to the amplifier system. As the pulse's duration is related with the analog signal, it is again reconstructed using low pass filter across the output. Remember that class D amplifier is the highest power efficient amplifier class. So it has smaller heat dissipation, so small heat sink is needed. The circuit requires various switching components like MOSFETs, which has low on resistance. It is widely used topology in uh, digital audio players or controlling the motors as well. But we should keep in mind that it is not a digital converter.